I recently turned 18, but I've been a man since I was nine. <laughs> Seeing your dad murdered makes you grow up real quick. Growing up in Flint, I was around the wrong kind of people, going down the path of self-destruction. As I look back on my life so far, I should be either dead or in jail. My dad, he sold cocaine. He did the drugs and everything. And so it's like, like father, like son. Like I have the gene, I can do it if I want to, but that's not right. She's a little mad at me because I made her take her now. He did grow up so quickly, just all of a sudden, from 10 years old, now you're the man of the house. But in a lot of black families, you the oldest, you are the man of the house. Sleepy. So instead of, you know, running and hiding from that position, he said, well, you know what? I'm gonna have to step up. He is very proud of his siblings, and you can see the love. You can see him rocking his baby sister to sleep, you know, staying home to babysit when he needed to be in school. Even his younger sister, who is in middle school, just trying to put her on the right path, doing things that a father would do. When my mother went back to jail, I took responsibility in my own hands. We had to live with my grandfather, who has custody of us. Marcus has always been like ahead of his time. Even before, you know, the tragedy happened and I went to prison, he's always been my child that I would have to look and say, are you, you know, seven years old or are you 17? Laughing out of control and running. My mom tells me it's not fair because, you know, she should be here doing this, but she's just, she's locked up right now because she made a bad decision. And it's not fair for me to basically oh, give up all my teenage years to be a man. I always have my brothers and sisters. I had to take care of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. I just had to. Like, I ain't have no choice. Me standing in the basement. No biggie, because it's better than staying outside, right? When it all comes down to it, it's gonna get better than this. And it's been getting better than this. So I'm not about to put myself down because of my living conditions. Regardless of my shortcomings, I always try to inspire my kids and you know let them know that they're important and when bad things happen or whatever, um, there's always good things to look up and live, you know, and just keep going like no matter because life is gonna beat you down. But it's not getting beat down; it's what you do when you get back up. That's the way hard working guy. Keep it up. Oh, I will. A lot of respect. I think he really wants them to see something different. He doesn't want his family to be a statistic. Most teenagers in my shoes cannot deal with all of this, but I've always been determined to reach success. Failure is not an option for me. Plus two is equal to eight. With all the things going on in my life, I still maintain a 3.2 GPA, which could be better if I did not have so many obstacles in my life. He listens, so he has the right people in his ear telling him things that he needs to hear. He has a support network that other kids don't have. So when you want to give up and you have somebody in your ear telling you not to and showing you the benefits of not, not giving up, tremendous. If I would have never met Dr. Emerson, I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be sitting in the casket. Marcus knows I will not accept laziness. I won't accept laziness at all. So he was, in my words, he was bull jiving. So I brought him into the office and I laid him out like I'd never laid a student out. What I told Marcus was, I put a, my heart and soul into you, and here you are doing what you're doing now. I said, the energy that I put into you, the passion, my soul, my heart, my everything, my being, and this is what I get for my return? I said, I don't deserve this. And he said, I didn't ask you to be my father. My father is dead. And then I told him, you're right. You didn't, and your father is dead. But here's the beauty, if there is beauty to it, you get to choose what man in your life can step in and be the father that you don't have. I said, if you want it to be me, I will take that on. It was our moment that changed both of our lives. Mr. Marcus Bugs. Marcus won't fail. Failure has to be defined by the individual. Hell, this is a kid that arguably shouldn't even graduate high school. 
I remind Marcus that one out of three African-American males in the state of Michigan graduate. He's beaten that already. 50% of, of, of black males make it to prison. He's beaten that already. 20% of African-Americans get their college degrees. So if he gets it, wow, failure? Uh, he's not going to fail. There's no worry. I sleep well at night knowing that. My greatest fear of going to college would be, am I going to be that teenager again that I never got a chance to be? Am I going to do things that I'm not supposed to do? Or am I going to do the right thing? And then I told Marcus, you will never lose that focus and that drive. He said, well, you know what will be my focus? I always think about my siblings. And when I think about them, I just get a new focus. He said, I refocus. When I went to college, I didn't have that burden on me. That's a burden. But for him, it's not a burden. It's maybe his destiny, that this is what I have to do. I see myself as paving the way for my brother and my sisters to make their road much easier than it was for me. They will see with the right attitude and drive, they can do anything they want to do. For me, the attitude and drive is to be the first bugs to graduate from college. I got on my email and I'm looking at my calendar and thinking about the things that uh, we had to do, Marcus and I. So I start thinking, uh-oh, I wonder if Marcus has a suit because we got to be, we got to be looking tight. A nice black suit or a nice black. dark suit? He said, no, not at all. He said, I've never had one. You have some choices, but not white. Instantly I said, okay. We went to Men's Warehouse. It all depends what you like. It's just about style, what you like. To see me in a suit, from where I come from, it's like, wow. Like, whoever thought that I'd be looking at myself through five mirrors at one time. Like, is this even possible? Give me a jacket, please. It's amazing when you put a suit on somebody, just the confidence level does change, specifically a student. It really takes time to really look this good. And then I saw the kid in him again. Look at this dude. <laughs> Man, I have this suit on. I'm looking good. I wish I could show the world. He's like, can you take a picture of me? Because he just wanted to send it out. No hands in pockets. And I told him, you know, you, you get a career, there are many more suits to come. He received an award from Asala. How are you today? I'm good. How's that? which was given at the Charles Wright Museum of African American History. This is Dr. David Goldberg, Wayne State University. Nice to meet you. And they asked him would he like to say a few words. For anybody out there who is my age or younger or still in high school, I, I am the oldest of four siblings. And if you, have, if you have siblings or even if you don't, there's always somebody looking up to you. There's always somebody looking up to you. So lead and just be that leader. He wowed him. He, he wowed the crowd. He wowed me. When I said what I said, it was just straight from the heart. They also gave me the key to Detroit. So I got the key to Detroit, and I'm from Flint, Michigan. That, that feeling right there is like, I got a key to your city, and I don't even live there. That means I'm doing something that's essential. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. That's right. Too often we turn our backs uh, on students like Marcus, people that you know have shown that they you know can really, if given the opportunities, do incredible things. And one of the things that I told him is that I think it's important for him to go to a place where he could have an experience like a college student, you know, experience some things that maybe he didn't have a chance to because of his responsibilities. The uh, month of February is when we took a visit to Western Michigan. You've got to place them in a situation to see that there's something else that's out there. There's a greater force than them. It's a greater force than Ann Arbor. What are you interested in studying? Social work. Communications. Taking Marcus and the other students as well on campus, oh, that, that was tremendous. They didn't know I'd been admitted, but I knew. You're not gonna tell me. I did. Oh, you're so bad. I Are you kidding me? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you, kid. Uh, get out of here. Well, <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. 
Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> so I, can't, proud of you buddy. I can't believe that. Yeah. So it was just a, a real, like, a real moment. <laughs> hey, hey Marcus, Marcus yeah, they're they're you. Good to meet you. Man. Nice Thank to meet you, you too. I mean, when the, when the president comes down, it's the best. Let's see, Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor here, right? Basketball. That looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you, we need one of those Bronco shirts on Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The feeling was like, like I made it to this point. I did the first step, I passed. Uh, step two was coming August 21st. Western Michigan University. Um, to learn how to write research papers. I don't think three years ago, Marcus even thought about college. I don't think anybody in his family has been in his ear about, you're gonna go to college, you're gonna go to college. And Dr. E always said, there's a college out there for everybody. Like that's where all the other freshmen at. You know, some would say, did he really make it? And my answer is absolutely. Do you know how many students don't ever get the opportunity to get into college, don't have somebody to push them to college? You have to learn how to do a lot more time balancing. Right now, I still have a journey, I have a trek. I'm gonna start it off right, and it's gonna end great. Mm. When next time you'll cook some more ribs? Soon. Can you talk and eat now? Yeah. What happened? This summer for me has been a journey. It's like I'm walking down the path. Far down at the end of the path is Western. A chance to change my life, to get away from this. Marcus called me when they, when they was get, getting kicked out of their apartment. My step-grandma decided that she wanted to move out of her house. She never came to me and said, well, Marcus, you need to find somewhere for your brothers and sisters to go because me and your grandfather relationship is not working out. So when she moved out, it was like, what are we going to do? You know, like, wow, like, where are we going to go now? Marcus, you got to look out for your siblings. You don't want them out there living in Motel 6. When a lot of stuff goes on in my life, like for me having to move out there and in the hotel, I just say, it's meant to be. Because if everything was easy, it's like, where's the hard part at? When, when's the hard part gonna come? So if I'm going through all this hard stuff now and I keep fighting through it and I keep overcoming it, as soon as I reach the end of all this hard stuff, it'll be easy. Okay, so. My granddad, he um, he was saying how we was plotting on him. How you saying? <laughs> how he was saying how we we was plotting on them or whatever. Plotting. Yeah, like. On him. Yeah. So, like how? Paranoid. Yeah, I, I don't know what he was. He started saying stuff like me, my brothers, and my sisters are the reason why his wife left, and he was like telling my brothers and sisters that stuff. So, me and him got into it. I was worried for you, man. I thought you were gonna get locked up, but I heard, I heard, try to kill the man. Uh, it was self-defense, though. He hit me in my jaw. And then when he hit me in my jaw, yeah, dude, I straight up. You. you know. Oh. But remember now, you're 18, though. Good. And my, sister, my brothers and sisters saw it. Right. Period. The so. law's a little bit different, though. Yeah. But you're 18. But go ahead. Let, let's finish, though. Sometimes you think you're doing right by your child, or your grandchild in this case, and you're not, but you can't recognize that. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing that I always say is, there are things that I'm going to do or say to my boys that I think is right. Could be wrong. But I think it's right. At the time that I'm doing it, I think it's right. And then you turn around and you realize that, man, what I said absolutely impacts them. Negative. Well, Marcus and his grandfather, you know, had, had that fight. Uh, his mother had called me early that day, saying some things to her own son that I don't think that she'd be saying. You know how your mom is, so nothing should ever surprise you. I don't think nothing should surprise you. You know what she's capable of doing. I think ultimately she does want the best for you. You know, but she's got to get to know you too. You're not the same guy that you were when she left. And also, she doesn't have the influence, the same influence on you as when she left. Love you. Love you too. As we made it home today. Mm -hmm. yeah, we out here. Yeah. And I think in some respects, man, you should, you need to cut her a break. I got you some stuff. Uh, got you a hat and stuff. 
No, some little souvenirs. You want to see? Even um, though you're fired up. I understand it. I understand. But man, your mom's been locked up, dude, for how long? She um, deserves a couple. Of, she deserves a break or two, man. She got a break. She was locked up. That's the break. See, don't yeah, be so arrogant saying that. Break. Don't be so arrogant you know, saying You just that don't of understand because I'm, I'm going to let you know something right now because for the simple fact that you are the one that made me or saved my life, she was very upset about that. She said when she saw you, she was going to cuss you out. And when she told me that, I'm like, are you serious? Are you, are you kidding me? What did you think? She's going to be open arms like, oh, just come on, man. It's hard. It's hard to accept somebody else stepping in your child's life and filling a role that you didn't fill yourself. Ultimately, she's pulling for you. Coming to school is a starting point for my life. Time to focus on me now. As I was getting my key and filling out the forms, I was like, I'm almost home, I'm almost home, I'm almost home. I saw like students there with their mom and helping them build stuff and hanging their stuff up and basically organizing their dorm. I was just thinking like, what if I have my granddad and my mom here and my little brothers and sisters to see this? That I will give them a, a good inspiration. I think the one thing that every student that is coming to college struggles with is just that transition from wherever they've come from to being, you know, a college student. Now, look at the little part right above that. It's from being the uh, big person on campus to being in a campus that has 25,000 students and you're just one of 25,000. It's just it's being open to new ideas and experiences and things that um, you've never been exposed to. Walking around campus is it's really it's thrilling to me. It's like all the stuff that I went through in my life, I made it to college when they said I couldn't make it. He'll be able to really help you in looking. And when you look at um, where he's come from and you see his family situation and, and that he is that leader for his siblings, and trying to, to lay a foundation for them to follow, um, you can see he does the same thing with the rest of our CETA scholars and he encourages them and inspires them to step up and be what they're capable of being. All right, what, what is like my main problems when I, when I do this? You know, I'm not afraid to find the connections I need to help me succeed in life. Why would I be afraid of that if this is what I came here for? You can learn a lot of things from me. You can learn that no matter what you're going through, you can still make it. You can believe in yourself. Don't be scared to face a challenge. Everything needs to be a teachable moment. Everything, like even what you're going through now, it's a teachable moment. You get to tell people, look, this will happen to me. Your mama, that's a teachable moment. You can stand there and say, is this the path I want? Uh, Your Honor, this is the date and time set for the preliminary examination. Or do I want something more? That's all you can do. Ain't but two things in life, choices and consequences. The defense moves to dismiss. She does understand, Your Honor. Thank you. This is your story. How do you want it to end, babe? That's all I can ask you. It could end like this with everybody else winning, or, could, or you could get a win. What we gonna do? We gotta tighten it up. We have to. You cannot save your siblings if you don't get it together. Oxygen mask on yourself first. 
and somebody says, you know, I want to be free, I want to make my own decision, you do it. Bye. Bye. And that's how I essentially felt. I still love you like a son, but you find your way in this world. And when you need me, I'm always here. You know, when he came in here, I said, you don't have to be shamefaced with me. Our relationship goes so far back, you don't have to worry about that. But there is a degree of shame because you, you flunked out, you're not in school, the issues with your mom at home, everything is just imploded. As a man, sometimes it's hard to get up the nerve then to be humble and say, I need your help. Yeah. I need your help.